So I've been meaning to do a divider without using a 3D printer for a year or so. Uh, people keep asking me how to, to do that and so I finally got around to doing it. So procrastination is the key to flexibility. This is how I did that and it seems like it's going to work very well and actually it's definitely faster than doing 3D prints. I don't know that it's cheaper for sure but it's really inexpensive uh, and quite easy and anybody should be able to do it with tools that they have at home assuming they do crafts of any kind. So here it is. So I've been asked a lot of times is there a way to make these dividers that I've been using without having a 3D printer and I was sure that you could just wrap some cardboard or foam core with plastic. So this is what I came up with. This is three layers of foam core, just regular foam core. Um, I think I got this at the dollar store for a buck and a quarter. I think it was a Dollar Tree. And it's just sheets of it and you can get it all kinds of places. Three layers of this were perfect for the divider for this. So all I did was cut out three pieces of it. So, and I'm just cutting through the first layer right now so I don't cut through the table. And of course you could use a metal straight edge or something and do a lot better job than I do. And I've got the three pieces and then to line them up and keep them lined up I'm going to hot melt glue them together with just a little bit but before that after I've got them lined up I'm going to stab them with a toothpick or two toothpicks to keep any to keep all three layers in line so then I can kind of um, I can kind of s spread them apart. Uh, broke that one. I can break, slide them apart, add a little bit of hot melt glue in there, and I'll be able to get them lined up again. So I'm going to just add a little, little bit of hot melt glue on the layers. and then squish it together. That way it's all lined up and squish it down. All right, now I've got the piece that fits in there. That fits the spacing. Now I want place for magnets because if I do something like soup or something, these will just float right up. The plastic uh, Ziploc bag portion that I'm covering with, of course, it could get damaged and leak, but it'd also be very easy to just recover. Got some magnets, and it's just the size I happen to have around. Could probably use any strong magnets, but they, I think they should be pretty strong. And what I'm going to do is just uh, kind of mark the size of it. And I'm going to put two of them and I'm not worrying about the spacing, not measuring it. I'm just kind of spreading them apart and putting some on there. And then the magnet, I'm going to start with this, the thickness of the magnet. And I'm going to go straight through. Okay, and I'm just putting a little um, slit through there, and that's going to be the thickness of the magnet. All right, and then I'm just going to cut. I'm not going to worry about making it rounded, 
I'm just going to put an angle on each side about the size of the magnet. Knock those pieces out. All right. And those will fit in there. And I might have been, made it a little bit too deep, but all I have to do is add the hot melt glue in there and then just put the magnet in until it's kind of flush. Okay, now I just got it till it's about flush down there. All right. Okay. All right, there, I just have them pushed down there till it's flush. I don't want any extra glue on the bottom so that it's smooth, but if I have any on there, I can just take it off with a, with a knife. There we go. So it's nice and smooth along there. So on this one, I just put it at the bottom of the Ziploc and used that. And then I took the remaining piece of Ziploc and just sealed it. So I took that piece of, of the Ziploc. Now I'm going to go ahead and seal this at the angle of the bag. Just putting this the same angle. So you can kind of see it just follows the angle of that. Okay, so I'll seal it at that angle. And I'm not sure how wide it needs to be. I just did it and added a little bit more. And then of course I had to turn the sealer way down so it doesn't melt through because this is not anything like a Mylar bag. I think I need it narrower still, but we'll test it. Okay, it looks like I need to make this one a little bit narrower at the bottom especially. It looks like there's a little bit of extra gap. You can see how it kind of can wiggle still. So, I'm going to just make this a little bit narrower. All right, now I'm going to cut right th along the seal. Okay, now I'm going to turn it inside out. Now I'm going to go ahead and seal the top of this too, though probably doesn't really matter. And if you used seal-a-meal bags, 
I think you could do the same thing with seal a meal bag and then vacuum it. Then I think you'd get a great fit. So that might be worth doing also. But I'm just going to go ahead and seal this. Okay. And that's it. I think we've got a good divider that should hold up well. I think, again, I think I'll try a seal meal bag because I think vacuuming it out could be a great way to go. That should be able to be made by almost anybody with just simple tools. Uh, I can probably attach a file somewhere that shows the shape of this. But it's easy enough to just trace a piece of paper or cardboard and test it until you get the fit right and then use that as your pattern. And it doesn't have to be a perfect fit along all the sides. Uh, if it's a thick material, thick foods, it's not going to slosh around. And if it's soup or something, as long as you freeze it evenly, the juice will go back and forth and even itself out. But it will still, once you take it out, after you freeze it, you're still going to have the two halves. You might have a little ice piece around there, but it's never been a problem for us to, when that happens. Okay, simple as that. It has taken me a lot longer than I'd planned to finish the video of making the dividers without using a 3D printer. The weather has finally turned nice and I've been trying to catch up on some yard work that I've been putting off for a few years. The advantage of the delay is my sisters had a chance to try out the dividers. Now we can get the food out of the pans and see how it worked. I also wanted to give a special shout out and thanks to all the people that have been supporting the channel and especially the Buy Me A Coffee. The Buy Me A Coffee takes almost nothing from the creator where YouTube takes 30% of the super chats and super thanks. But if that works better for you, I really, really want to thank you. And I also want to thank you for all the comments that helps feed the algorithm of YouTube. I really appreciate it. Now let's get the pans that she did and get them de-panned, and then we'll get them in the zipper bag and give them back to her so she can get them ready to freeze dry. Here's how my sister usually freezes her pans. She covers them with plastic wrap and puts them in the freezer. And then when she depans them, she usually wraps her blocks with that plastic wrap that the pan was covered with. But I'm doing this set, so I'm just going to throw them in the zipper bag. And she said she did wipe down the surfaces with non-stick cooking spray before she filled them. Let's see how it works. And these are the thinner pans that you get at the Dollar Tree. They work great for me because of the flex. The thicker ones don't flex as much and they're harder to get the food out. You can also get silicone pans that are a perfect fit for these. But they're more expensive and they don't work as well for me because you can't stack them the same in the freezer. I can put six pans on a layer in the freezer and then put a layer of the corrugated plastic and then another layer of pans. Wow, that really, really worked well. Okay. All right, and then that just came clean. The other pan came out the same way, but this is where the camera decided to stop recording video. So I will be making more of these because these are cheaper and faster than 3D printing. Bottom line on these is these seem to work well. 
I'll probably try some experiments with some uh, seal a meal bags because I think those would be a little bit heavier. I think they would hold up better. These are the heavy duty freezer bags for the Ziplocs. So I think these will do pretty well. But with the seal meal, I'd like to try that and vacuum them out to make them nice and tight. I'll add a little piece of, I think just hot melt glue ridge along there to give something to grip on. And I think that will work out pretty well. All in all, we'll see how it goes. And again, Thanks for the coffee and thanks for all the other type of support. And if I make any changes or any significant updates, I'll let you know. I'll keep you informed. Thanks. So I've been planning and meaning to do the 3D no dividers. I've been planning and meaning to do the three the 3D dividers. Let's try this again. I want to invite you to check out and maybe even subscribe to our second channel, School Reports On The Go. I started setting up a second channel last year, but never finished. I had been planning to set it up for a little more than two years and to use it to show us modifying our minivan to use for some camping trips. While camping, we would, of course, be using some of our freeze-dried foods. We will also be posting other projects to the channel. So doing things, making stuff, and going places. Some of the things I've wanted to post just aren't a good fit for what has become kind of a freeze-dried channel. It didn't start that way, but it kind of is that way now.